It's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to this edition of Q&A with the Coach. This question comes from Idruski, who says, Do you think that people have overly high opinions of BJJ and Muay Thai? In any conversation with any martial arts enthusiast, at least one around my age, I don't know what that age is, you can bring up boxing, wrestling, etc., but apparently, in most people's eyes, that means nothing in comparison to Muay Thai or BJJ. My idea is that people just see too many of the countless videos of people slamming their shins with top force into metal poles. How many of those videos are there? Trees or anything like that. And as for BJJ, the fact that it was winning a winning factor in the early UFC events, which I think has made too much of an impression on people, what's your take on this? A couple of things. First of all, not every gym that calls themselves Muay Thai is Muay Thai, or BJJ is BJJ. But that being said, why... Not why, but what is the actual value of Jiu-Jitsu and Muay Thai in combat sports today? Is it important? If... Let's talk about the early UFC. If a Sambo fighter had won UFC 1 instead of Hoist Gracie, would there be a bunch of fuss about Sambo? Let, let's just assume that that happened, that a Sambo fighter won UFC 1, and Sambo caught the attention of the world, and everybody thought, well, we need to do Sambo now, because that guy choked everybody out. And this Sambo fighter did what Hoist Gracie did, and it had a similar effect to the jujitsu phenomenon that swept the world. Okay. What would Sambo be like today? Would it be the same as it is today or would it be different? I would say it would be quite a bit different. It would be a much more highly developed art today than it currently is. What if judo, what if some judoka had won UFC 1 instead of Hoist Gracie? And the same thing happened, okay? Again, the judoka goes on to influence people to train in judo. I would say... Judo would be a much more developed grappling art today than it was back then. Fill in the blank with any grappling art. Catch wrestling. If a catch wrestler had won UFC 1 in dominant fashion, submitted everybody, just like Hoist Gracie did, and everybody made a big fuss about it and started training in catch wrestling, same thing. Catch wrestling would be much more highly developed today than it was back then. Why? Because jujitsu today is much more highly developed than it was back then, specifically because it has become so popular and widespread and widely practiced. And when you have a billion people practicing one thing, you're going to get a lot of advancement. Now, we don't have a billion jujitsu practitioners. I just threw a hyperbolic number out there. But we have a lot. We have millions of jujitsu practitioners today. Whereas, say, back in 1993, uh, that was a much, much smaller number. We're talking about, like, maybe how many jujitsu practi practitioners were there? Like 100? Less than 200? I don't know. There weren't that many, especially at the high level. Today, there are black belts all over the world within spitting distances of each other. And when you have that many people who are good at their craft, and they are meeting, and they're exchanging information, especially online with the advent of the internet today, and we're always trying to improve it and make it better, and you have all of these coaches in various combat sports, MMA, Jiu-Jitsu, submission grappling, etc., and we are trying to make our Jiu-Jitsu the best for that specific thing. The, the end result is Jiu-Jitsu becomes better and better and better. We could say the same thing about Muay Thai. Again, most, most gyms, combat sports gyms, especially outside of Thailand, that offer a Muay Thai class are just teaching you a striking class. That isn't actually Muay Thai. It has nothing to do with the cultural traditions of Muay Thai. They're not going to teach you the Wai Kru Ram Muay. They're not going to teach you any of that stuff. In fact, a lot of them don't even teach clinch work, and it's just punching and kicking. It's basically kickboxing. But they call it Muay Thai because it's become a demode name, popular to call it. So, 
has our understanding of striking improved as much as our understanding of jujitsu? Huh. That's a good question. In some ways, yes, because I would say there are substantially more people on the planet today who are competent at striking in the context of mixed martial arts, or specifically with a competent grappler who is able to take you down at will. And there are more people today who are able to strike and stop their opponent from taking them down than there ever were. Go back to 1993. There was pretty much nobody doing that, nobody mixing the martial arts, very, very few people. People are letting off fireworks. I don't know if you can hear them. It's uh, Chinese New Year week over here in Shanghai, and so they're, uh, it's kind of surprising because they, they banned fireworks in the inner ring and the outer ring of the city, and I live kind of on the borders of the outer ring, so I can still hear them out there. So your idea is that people see too many videos of people slamming their shins into metal poles and trees. I, I don't think I've seen any videos of people slamming their shins into poles. I used to see videos of people in Thailand kicking down banana trees. Banana trees aren't really that hard, to be honest. So, But if, if that gets you excited about training, seeing a video of some dude kicking a tree, okay, but maybe don't go kick a tree. Use a heavy bag, that's what they're for. They're much more forgiving on your shins, and it's a much better conditioning tool. If you kick a tree a whole bunch of times, you're not going to have a kicking leg anymore. If you kick a heavy bag a bunch of times you're going to be able to do it again the next day and the next and the next and the next, and then that leg is going to be tough enough for kicking in a few months. So take that as you will. Next question. <laughs> 